You know the routine now, what we're going to have you do, right? All right, so come on out, everyone, please, please rise. We're going to honor our nation. We'll start when you're ready. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Fantastic job. Bonus points. Extra credit. There you go. All right. Special presentations. Do we have any special presentations, special presentations tonight, Michelle? No, we don't. Do not. All right. Move right on to Parker Chamber of Commerce updates. I do not see anyone from the chamber here tonight. Everybody's on vacay. All right. So we're going to skip that. And I also don't see anyone from the DBA here tonight. Or am I missing? Holy cow, was that me? Oh. What was Ooh, that? That was kind of cool. Live stream on so I can make sure it's working. If I knew I was going to be through that, I would have like done something better than, mm -hmm. I would have said something like a beatbox or something like that. No, please don't. Okay. All right. You don't want me to beatbox? If you hang around to the end, maybe I'll beatbox. No. All right, so we'll skip the Downtown Business Alliance updates. We'll move straight to public comment. This is an opportunity for you to come on up and address council. There's a three minute time limit on public comment. It's for items that are currently not on our agenda. If you're here for an item that is on our agenda, there'll be public comment for that at that time. Uh, no action will be taken on these general public comment items. So we'll open up public comment at 7.02 p.m. if there's anyone here for general public comment. Seeing, oh, you started to move your leg. You were gonna come up, weren't you? I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna close public comment at 7.03 p.m. Move to reports, items, and comments from mayor and council. How about Mr. Martin? Um, I don't have anything to see. Okay, Amy. I do not have anything this evening. Debbie? Um, uh, Council Member uh, Williams and I had a P3 meeting this past uh, week, and I'd just like to say that our uh, P3 folks have been uh, very active. They did three different public outreaches. Uh, on May the 30th, they uh, did a senior stroll. They had 261 votes, and this is when they take the uh, pictures around and people vote and make comments on what to do with the different properties. Uh, they also had um, a presentation on site at Arbor Day. They had 508 votes. And my favorite one was the ice cream social at Discovery Park. They had uh, 771 votes. So it's just kind of a array, not anything that would be unexpected that we've, that we've already seen, mm -hmm. but it just reinforces it. And other people that have maybe not participated previously have, have done so. And then uh, we went to the, the presentation, the unveiling of the next season for PACE. Uh, that was last Thursday night? Tuesday. Tuesday night. Tuesday night, which was very exciting. Uh, I think it was probably the largest turnout that, that we've had thus far. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And Over 350 it's... people. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. John. Wow. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and I think uh, what Howie Mantel is coming, and yeah. th nothing pales in comparison to a sister act, which well, the <laughs> Sister act was, is this season, yeah. but next season the full Monty was announced. And I have a role in that. <laughs> wow. I do. Serious. That's so fantastic. buy your tickets. Yes. So uh, w w with that, I think we're all looking forward to the July 4th event, but we can always hear a little Sister Act Full Monty discussion. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear Sister Act Full Monty discussion. I don't buy I don't buy your tickets. Let's Sister Act vote Parker on that one. <laughs> but uh, Parker's Stars and Stripes celebration is on for this Wednesday. So if you have not had the opportunity to go online and buy your VIP tickets, please do so post haste. Um, Castle Rock show is canceled. Our show is on. It's going to be awesome. Great. Uh, Dr. Milan will be there with a bucket of water just in case people things get a little, yeah, several buckets of water just in case things get out of control. But it will be a good time. Um, between Sister Act rehearsals and then I was out of town for a few days with my sons. My son was able to, youngest son was able to compete in his fifth national um, tournament for uh, saber fencing in St. Louis this last um, I, last week, and then he leaves again on Wednesday to go back and f to compete again. So I haven't had a lot of opportunity to do anything else other than that. So move on to the next item, which is our consent agenda. Consent agenda items will be cons are considered to be routine, will be enacted with one motion and one vote, unless a member from council asks to have something removed for further discussion. So council before you, you have consent agenda items 7A through 7F, and I would entertain a motion or further discussion, please. 
Move to approve uh, consent agenda items A through F. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Amy. Council, please vote. <clears throat> Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item number eight, public hearings. The first one we have up is uh, 8A. This is lot one, tracks eight and nine, Blair Industrial Center, tracks seven, eight, and nine. First Amendment, use by special review. Bless you to whoever sneezed out there. And Ryan, you are going to lead us. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, Council. Uh, this is a use by special review request to allow for the continuation of an, out of an existing outdoor storage use. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Carol. Uh, the applicant, Steve Sariza from Gene Engineering is present this evening. Uh, he is sitting behind me, kind of looks like my brother. Uh, and, <laughs> and, has a, <laughs> and has a brief- Oh, man. And has a brief presentation following mine, uh, and he'll be able to answer questions from council. Tom, well. did you swing the camera around real quick <laughs> to pan so the other- <laughs> <laughs> So this parcel is located at 10295 Progress Way within the town's light industrial zone district and light industrial master plan character area. The uses surrounding this parcel include outdoor storage to the north, professional offices to the east, flex industrial space to the south, and auto repair to the west. The property owner operates a vehicle towing business and uses, and uses the south half of the property for the temporary storage of towed vehicles and the north half of the property for the storage of construction related materials. There are no buildings or structures located on the site and no buildings or structures are being proposed with this use by special review. The site is not accessible to the public and is enclosed on all four sides by a secured six foot high slatted chain link fence. So in February of 2016, uh, as council knows, the council approved an ordinance that prohibited storage as a primary land use in Parker. That ordinance contained a provision to allow for existing storage uses within the light industrial zone district to continue as long as a use by special review application was submitted to the town prior to, for consideration prior to September 7th of 2016. The applicant submitted both of those applications for staff's review uh, by that date. So the proposed site development plan up on the screen uh, designates access drives as shown in gray, temporary vehicle storage areas shown in blue, a contractor storage area shown in red, and a sediment basin, secondary containment basement is shown in purple. The site is assessed from two points off of Progress Way and is enclosed on all sides by a secure fence, as mentioned. Uh, the property owner does not desire to increase the intensity of uses on this site from what already exists and estimates that the site will continue to, conti excuse me, continue to see 16 vehicle trips per day uh, for temporary vehicle storage and construction uh, material pickups. So the landscape plan proposes landscaping on the east side of the site adjacent to Progress Way. The proposed evergreens along Progress Way will screen the outdoor storage yard at maturity. And the shrubs, cobble mulch, and granite boulders proposed will bring the streetscape landscaping into consistency with the surrounding streetscape landscaping. So staff has analyzed the applicant's responses to the use, use by special review uh, criteria along with the proposed site and landscape plan and has determined that the use by special review criteria has been met. Uh, staff is recommending that the council approve the use by special review with the seven conditions as outlined in staff's report. The application has been legal notice per the land development ordinance requirements. Um, so that concludes my, oh, excuse me, on June 14th of 2018, the Planning Commission recommended that the council approve this use by special review with a seven to zero vote. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Council, do you have any questions for Ryan before we bring the applicant up? Nope. No. Nope. All right. Sir, if you don't mind coming down, if you'd state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. My name is Steve Cerise. I'm with Gene Engineering, 5690 Webster Street, Arvada, Colorado, 8002. As uh, Ryan said, I'm his uh, illegitimate brother. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were asked to uh, present uh, just a brief presentation. Uh, I don't want to rehash and, and, and bore you to any degree, but uh, we wanted to just uh, kind of hit the high points on the, uh, on the project. Uh, the project uh, or the subject property has been used for the last 23 years under the same condition. It's the desire of the owner uh, and the applicant to bring this into conformance by use by special review. We believe that all nine criteria have been met and exceeded. Um, <clears throat> the vicinity map as shown on the uh, presentation uh, in front of you uh, is the general location. Again, that's been a use that has been in, in existence for the last 23 years. 
Uh, there's a site plan that shows uh, the uh, high highlights of the project. Uh, coming from a fire and rescue background, uh, we had some se several constraints on this project that we wanted to make sure that were addressed. Uh, first and foremost was the access for fire in the event that there was a, uh, an incident that required their access. You'll notice that they have a 24-foot uh, access easement throughout there with Knox hardware on all the doors uh, and gates. Uh, along with uh, secondary containment. Uh, as part of this project, we wanted to make sure that if there was a spill, there was the ability to catch that spill and stop it from leaving the site. Um, we have a spill control manual, which is in place and be, will be uh, uh, in the applicant's uh, possession. Uh, the owner and the uh, employees will follow that spill prevention program. We've designed the site specifically uh, by in utilization of dirt rather than hardscape, so that dirt could be uh, a containment method. So if there was a leak, if there was something that dripped onto the ground, it could be contained relatively quickly and cleaned up uh, by the owner or fire as necessary. Uh, the secondary means of containment is if we had a serious uh, leak and we had a rain event, that would cause the water or to uh, transmit some of the pollutants, uh, get it into the pond, and we could stop it there by means of damming uh, so it doesn't leave the site. Um, Stormwater was a big component of this. We've uh, conformed to Tri-County Health and uh, uh, Colorado Department of Environment and Health uh, as part of this project. Landscaping was another big part of this uh, project. Um, we've identified uh, two areas that uh, were, were a problem uh, with the current design uh, as it is today, and that's uh, parking outside the fence on the east, which is the top of the page, and the south, which is on the right side of the page. Um, we have landscape cobble and curb on the south, and we have uh, uh, ample landscaping on the east that will stop uh, that parking uh, from occurring. So, uh, we've significantly increased the beauty of that prob uh, uh, property. All the adjacent property owners have been addressed and resolved. Uh, we've had several conversations with all the different uh, um, uh, concerns part concerned parties, and those have been resolved. Again, uh, it's within the community interest. Uh, Parker Towing has been in existence for well over 23 years using this um, uh, same facility for its existing use. Uh, it's their intent to expand their business, continue to serve fire, police, the town, uh, local, uh, small and large businesses uh, throughout the Parker area. Uh, all criteria have been met, and again, all the property owners adjacent to this property uh, concerns and to our belief has been uh, addressed. I'm happy to answer any other questions you, uh, the council or the mayor may have. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Council, questions? No. no. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll go ahead and open it up for public comment at 7.14 p.m. if there's anyone here to address council on this use by special review. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.14 p.m. and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. And move to approve based upon staff findings with the following conditions that are contained in the staff report, and there are seven of them that are listed. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by John. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item 8B. This is Trails at Crowfoot, preliminary plan amendment number one. Stacy, you're going to lead us tonight? I am. Do you have a doppelganger in the audience as well? I don't. Come on. We can pretend. We can pretend. Someone sitting behind you looks like you, right? <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Mayor and Town Council. So this is the Trails of Crowfoot Preliminary Plan Amendment Number 1. So this is an application for a preliminary plan to allow for 136 residential units in 68 duplex buildings on 27.185 acres within the Hess Ranch plan development. So a little bit of background on this property. The property was annexed into the town in 2003. It was annexed as part of the Sunmark plan development. In 2007, a major plan development amendment was processed which replaced the Sunmark plan development with the anthology plan development. Then in September, 20, September 21st, 2015, Town Council approved the Hess Ranch Plan Development, which split the southern half of Anthology into its own standalone PD. And that is what this shows. Then on November 6, 2017, Town Council approved an amendment to the Hess Ranch PD to adjust internal planning area boundaries within the Trails of Crowfoot development. This was a result of the realignment of North Pinery Parkway through the site. 
Also on November 6, 2017, Town Council approved the Trails at Crowfoot sketch plan for 890 residential units on 400.2 acres. And also a preliminary plan to create 753 single-family detached lots and 35 tracks, including a school site, a site for a future fire station, open space and parks on 406.68 acres. So the approved sketch plan from 2017 allows for a total of 890 residential lots within 14 planning areas. The sketch plan includes 136 residential units and paired homes within planning areas 35, 36, and 43, which are zoned mixed use under the Hess Ranch plan development. Those are outlined in green. The proposed preliminary plan includes a total of 136 residential units and three planning areas located at the intersection of Bayou Gulch Road and North Pinery Parkway. Access to the site will be established in a comprehensive roadway network within the original preliminary plan for the property. The proposed duplex lots will utilize this roadway network for access. In addition, internal access will be provided to each duplex development through a series of private roads and alleys, and that's kind of shown on that inset. The original preliminary plan for the Trails of Crowfoot dedicated the required open space, parks, trails, schools, and a fire station lot as required by the Town of Parker Land Development Ordinance and the Hess Ranch Annexation Agreement. And that's kind of shown on this in a very busy map. Additional park space is being proposed as part of the preliminary plan tonight. 136 duplex lots requires a park dedication of 3.25 acres. The original preliminary plan dedicated a total of 19.12 acres of park space. The proposed single family development required a minimum of 17.59 acres. This leaves approximately 1.53 acres of park space, which results in an additional 1.72 acres of park space that is needed just for this duplex development. The applicant is proposing to locate pocket parks within all three sections of proposed duplex development for a total of 2.372 acres of park space. The existing park space combined with this additional park space will meet or exceed the amount of park space required by the land development ordinance. So staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan, provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations. All utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. And the Planning Commission held a public hearing on June 14, 2018 concerning this request and recommended unanimous approval. So therefore, the Planning Commission and staff recommend that Town Council approve the Trails of Crowfoot Preliminary Plan Amendment Number 1, subject to the four conditions contained within the staff report. This concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have, and we do have the applicant here tonight to also give you a presentation. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Council, do you have any questions for Stacy? Debbie? Council? Just commenting on how bright the picture is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Let's go ahead and have the applicant come on down. You can state your name and address for the record, please. Absolutely. Uh, good evening. John Prestwich with PCS Group. Uh, our address is 200 Calamas Street, Denver, Colorado, 80223. Um, you know, we're very excited to be here tonight with the Trails at Crowfoot community. Um, you know, Stacy's done a great job, and I'll try and keep my presentation relatively brief. Um, this slide highlights all of the consultants that have been working together um, to develop this plan. Uh, it's a plan that we think responds to the site and makes economic sense and satisfies all the required technical studies uh, to ensure that the engineering is sound. Uh, and this team has a tremendous amount of experience uh, in creating communities throughout Colorado. Um, the ownership group consists of several individuals with extensive uh, experience uh, creating communities in the front range of Colorado. Um, on this slide, there are a couple of images from uh, one of the recent projects the uh, group is completing. Uh, it's the community of Laden Rock in the city of Arvana, Arvada. Um, it was recognized as the ninth uh, fastest selling master plan community in the United States and the only Colorado community to make the top 25. So again, Stacy kind of went through a lot of the uh, project history, but you know, the property was zoned in 2003 and then in November, uh, a PD amendment, sketch plan and preliminary plat were approved for the community. Um, and this proposal is consistent with those previous project approvals. 
So basically, we're requesting uh, approval for an amendment to the preliminary plan, um, and the amendment involves three planning areas containing approximately 27 acres with 68 duplex homes. Um, the preliminary plan provides all the technical detail to ensure that all the requirements can be met, and in this case, the proposed duplex homes are consistent with the PD requirements, and they provide a, a diversity of home type for the trails community. Um, the proposed layout and land uses supported by the Town of Parker 2035 Master Plan. And finally, about 33% of the site, or 9 out of the 27 acres, will be landscaped exceeding all the code requirements. So this slide shows, again, the overall conceptual master plan with Crowfoot Valley on the west. Um, and the primary entry for the community will come from the intersection of Crowfoot Valley at Road and Bayou Gulch, um, with an additional access point further south along Crowfoot Valley uh, with North Pinery Parkway. And planning areas 35, 36, and 43 are highlighted on this slide to depict their location within the trails community. Um, and in general, those areas are adjacent to North Pinery Parkway and Bayou Gulch Road intersection. And so I thought it was important to show the proximity of some of the uh, park areas that have been planned and designed within the trails community as it relates to the planning areas uh, we're talking about this evening. Um, this exhibit highlights the pocket parks and neighborhood park over the master plan. And the pocket parks are centrally located within the various sub-neighborhoods to act as gathering places. The circles represent about a four to five minute walk. Um, so you can see that the park locations provide excellent access for all residents of the trails uh, at Crowfoot community, uh, including planning areas 35, 36, and 43. And then again, while not part of this exact uh, proposed plan amendment, I thought it was important project background to take a look at the neighborhood park. Um, you know, again, we're really excited about the work we've done with the town of Parker Parks Department. Um, we think the design balances active and passive areas as well as manicured and native areas. Uh, the park will include a baseball field, multi-use field, uh, playground area, shade structure, picnic area, uh, three tennis courts. They can be striped for up to 12 pickleball courts, a full-size basketball court, a pool clubhouse, looped crusher finds and concrete trails, a nine-hole disc golf course, and off-street parking. Um, the park is generally higher uh, on the west, and it falls towards the east, and the active uh, amenities are really on the high side of the park. And planning area 36 will have homes that are adjacent to this great community amenity. Again, I'll move through this pretty quickly. This is a view looking across the uh, multi-purpose field, uh, play area in the baseball field in the top left. Um, you can also see the off-street parking, tennis courts, uh, basketball court, and the pool area in the top right. And then this is a view looking to the southeast. Uh, again, I think it showcases the more active uses sitting higher on the terrain with the more passive uses being lower in elevation. And I've also tried to highlight the location of planning area 36 in the upper right uh, corner of the slide. So we're pretty excited about the opportunity to add a quality duplex home type to the trails community. Um, these images are from some different communities in the metropolitan area, uh, the Meadows, Stapleton, and Copperleaf. Uh, the homes include strong front porches, um, and the garages are attached at the rear of the house, which really enhances the streetscape and minimizes driveway interruptions along sidewalks. And these homes have been very well received in similar master plan communities, and again, we're, we're super excited about bringing this to the trails community. So we've prepared some enlargements of the specific planning areas. Um, this is planning area 35. North Pinery Parkway is on the south side of the enlargement, and Bayou Gulch Road is on the east side of the enlargement. Uh, this planning area includes 25 paired homes, uh, and the design includes turf areas, a play area with climbing boulder, benches, walks, trash receptacles, and a picnic table. And this enlargement is uh, planning area 36. Again, uh, North Pinery Parkway is on the uh, south side of the enlargement, and in this case, Bayou Gulch is on the west side of this planning area. Uh, the homes are generally set back about 100 feet from Bayou Gulch Road, uh, and this planning area includes 22 paired homes. Again, the design includes turf areas, benches, walks, trash uh, picnic tables, as well as proximity to the neighborhood park. Uh, the paired homes will have their fronts with porches looking towards the park and will provide a high-quality streetscape without driveway interruptions. And finally, this enlargement is planning area 43. Uh, North Pinery Parkway is on the north side of the enlargement, and Bayou Gulch is on the east side of the enlargement. Uh, the planning area includes 21 paired homes, 
And again, the design is very similar, turf areas, benches, walks, uh, all of those kinds of amenities, as well as this area is very close to two pocket parks, one to the west and one to the south, uh, both within a very simple walk. So a couple of highlights of our proposal. Uh, you know, the amendment is consistent with the current project approvals. Uh, it adds an additional housing type for the trails community. Um, the proposal is consistent with the Town of Parker 2035 master plan and meets or exceeds the requirements of the zoning. And finally, the Town of Parker professional planning and engineering staff has evaluated the proposal and has determined that it does comply with the Hess Ranch PD as well as the landscape standards in the land development ordinance. Not really going to go through these, but this slide highlights the uh, approval criteria. And that really uh, concludes our presentation. We are available for any questions, and thank you very much for your time this evening. John, appreciate it. Council, questions? Josh? Just two questions for you, John. One, um, obviously with a, with a goal of hoping to, I don't know, expand the options in the housing market. And Parker, do you guys have, do you, do you at this point have, you know, some sort of price point, and then do you have a time to market at this point? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring our client up. Gotcha. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Just name and address for the record, please. I'll be the client. The client. Chris Elliott here on behalf of uh, HR 935. And you want an address too? Please. Uh, 7353 South Alton Way, Centennial. Okay. Thank you. Um, we anticipate, though, we don't have all costs and so forth. Understood. It'll be in the, in the five, probably in the mid fours, low to mid fours on a base price for the duplexes. And, and you have yet a, uh, a time to get dirt moving and or something going vertical? We are gonna start here within the next two to three weeks on the entirety of the project and expect that uh, uh, this area will be ready for um, vertical construction probably sometime um, this time next year. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Other questions? John, did you have a question? No, I, I was just uh, going to comment on the uh, paired housing. I think it's just uh, it's nice to see diversity of uh, for sale product coming on market. So. Okay. I, I, other than what the name suggests, can you tell me what a climbing boulder is <laughs> or looks like? Sure. It's <laughs> it's a, a faux boulder. They have to be. They have to meet uh, safety criteria, insurance criteria, but it looks literally like a, a boulder that kids can climb up on, and it's it's essentially playground equipment. So you, you know, at the field house, the climbing wall, there's the right next with the smaller thing. That's bigger, but it's a it's a fake little thing to climb on and play on. And, and it'll sit in a an area with the safe fall zone and all of that kind of stuff, similar to what you would see with a swing set or or anything anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Questions. No? no? All right, John, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll go ahead and open it up for public comment at 7.29 p.m. if there's anyone here to address council on this item. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.29 p.m. and I will entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve the trails at Crowfoot preliminary plan amendment number one based on the four staff findings contained in the staff report. Second. We have a motion by John and we have a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item C. This is corporate park at Stonegate rezoning. Uh, this is, includes ordinance number 3.316.1 on second reading, which is a bill for an ordinance zoning certain property within the town of Parker, Colorado, known as the corporate park at Stonegate property from modified light industrial to PD plan development district pursuant to the town of Parker land development code and amending the zoning ordinance and map to conform therewith. And Stacy, you're going to lead us again. I'm back. So thank you again, mayor and town council. So the intent of this rezoning is to rezone approximately 13.2 acres from modified light industrial to the corporate park at Stonegate plan development. This property has been posted and all public notice requirements have been satisfied. So in October 2015, this property was annexed and zoned into the town of Parker. In February 2016, a site plan was approved for the property to allow for an extension of Parker House Road, providing for an additional access point into the site. And that kind of shows the location of the additional access point. 
So the subject properties are located adjacent to E470 within an area that is developed for light industrial uses with future plans for commercial and or multifamily residential located to the north. The subject property was developed in 2008 within unincorporated Douglas County as a light industrial center. After the property was annexed and zoned in 2015, the town processed several zoning changes that restricted several commercial and light industrial uses on the property. These restrictions applied to these properties modified light industrial zoning. The proposed rezoning to a planned development will allow the properties to continue to be used for light industrial uses as was originally intended. The proposed light industrial PD zoning will maintain the light industrial nature of the property as well as provide for an orderly transition of uses from E470 to the residential uses to the north. So the town's master plan identifies the corporate park at Stonegate property as E470 mixed use. E470 mixed use area is characterized as a place where residents should be able to walk and bike to services through a mix of land uses, public amenities, and a multimodal transportation system. The requested zoning is consistent with the goals and strategies of the master plan as the revised zoning will help allow adequate opportunities for expansion of the town's economic base. It will provide a transition and buffer land uses from E470 and it will support new and existing businesses by allowing for the existing uses to continue and providing opportunities for similar light industrial uses to be drawn to this development. So staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined, has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan, provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations. Utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. The development satisfies the nine criteria required in the land development ordinance to rezone the property. And the planning commission held a public hearing on June 14th, 2018 concerning this request and recommended unanimous approval. So with that, the Planning Commission and staff recommend Town Council approve the corporate park at Stonegate rezoning. This concludes my staff report. I'm available for any questions you may have. In addition, the applicant is here tonight and does have a presentation for you. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Council, any questions for Stacy? No. Well, if the applicant would like to come up, that would be great. You state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Zach Kessler, 5619 DTC Parkway Suite 525, Greenwood Village, Colorado 8001 or 80111, sorry, no triple zero. Um, first of all, thanks for your time. Uh, we're <laughs> the, I represent Woodsford Properties in Ascendant and we're the owner of this property. We uh, assembled and developed it in 2008 and uh, we're a local private capital provider and we own flex industrial properties like this uh, throughout the Southwest. The site context here shows uh, there were two buildings uh, with neighboring industrial, light industrial facilities, including uh, the E-470 Highway Authority. And we, the portion of Parker House Road that is uh, shown there is halfway. I want to point out that we paid to extend on the northern property owner's line as part of our annexation into the town in 2015. These two buildings contain approximately 82,295 rentable square feet. They're concrete tilt-up buildings with high visibility, strong glass lines, and they vary in clear height from 18 to 24 feet, again, comprising of, of this light industrial flex, flexible type of building. Um, and with the easy access uh, to major roads and highways. We, we built these buildings with excess parking than would be typical of a light industrial to accommodate a variety of uses. So we have a little more than 3.5 per thousand parking here. So we try and have a, a real variety of, of users. It's currently uh, occupied by six tenants, including the General Services Administration, Stanley Seamer, Essentials, and Ebode, I2 Construction, Parker Power Sports, and Solar City, with more than 200 plus employees on site every day. You can see from the list of uses highlighted on the slide that it's, it's really a kind of a broad range uh, that this property appeals to. And as Stage D mentioned, we're, we're seeking to uh, protect the ability to attract future tenants and retain the tenants we have through a variety of mix of uses. We think that the high visibility of this site, I'm sure every one of you have driven by it on 470, uh, it, it attracts not just your typical light industrial. There's people there that want to be there because of that visibility. And so we think that this rezoning meets the criteria. It's important to us for the future of the project. It's consistent with the master plan, 
and it, it really will help uh, preserve the value of this asset for us going forward and, and kind of takes us back to where we were when we developed it in Douglas County with the intent of, of the varying clear heights and the extra parking. And with that, I will take any questions that you might have, and thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Zach. Council, do you have any questions? All right, Thank we'll you. go ahead and open it up for public comment at 7.36 p.m. If there's anyone here to address council. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.36, and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. Move to approve ordinance number 3.316.1 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Amy. Council, please vote. Same. Motion passes unanimously. Next item, which is item 8D, is comprised of four different areas. I'll go through all four, but we're going to only have one presentation. There will need to be four different motions, though, for those. So this is Pine Lane and Parker Road property, annexation and zoning. Item number D1 is resolution number 18-046, which is a resolution to set forth town council's findings of fact and conclusions as to the eligibility of Pine Lane and Parker Road properties for annexation into the town of Parker. D2 is ordinance number 2.261 on second reading, which is a bill for an ordinance approving and accomplishing the annexation of contiguous unincorporated territory known as the Pine Lane and Parker Road properties in Douglas County. D3 is ordinance number 3.335 on second reading, which is a bill for an ordinance zoning certain property within the town of Parker, Colorado, known as the Pine Lane and Parker Road properties to modified C commercial district pursuant to the town of Parker land development code and amending the zoning ordinance and map to conform therewith. And D4 is the annexation agreements, CARS MT1-1LP, Durham Douglas Properties LLC, HGD of Parker LLC, Latner Investment Group LLC, Peakview Parker LLC, Pine Lane Plaza LLC, S and, and Jabez, Jabez LLC. With that, Stacy. I'm back. Thank You're back. You. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. So this proposal is a zone of 15.5 acres consisting of eight lots. The properties are to be zoned modified commercial, which will continue to allow for the commercial uses already existing on the property. It is also to annex these 15.5 acres and zone and eight properties into the town of Parker. The property has been posted and all public notice requirements have been satisfied. So the subject properties are located on the northwest and the southeast corners of Pine Lane and Parker Road. They are currently zoned B business and C commercial within unincorporated Douglas County, which allows for a variety of uses. The applicants, which include seven of the property owners and the community development department in relation to the proposed zoning, have submitted annexation petitions and a zoning application for the subject properties. The town, in coordination with the property owners, have worked together to develop a modified commercial zoning that will continue the commercial corridor along Parker Road. The proposed zoning will support new and existing businesses by allowing for the existing uses and providing assurance that similar commercial uses will be drawn to this development. These properties are considered enclaves, which means they're located within unincorporated Douglas County, but surrounded by the town of Parker. The town has been working for several years to clean up the town's boundary and annex these enclaves areas. In 2016, town staff approached these property owners and businesses for annexation into the town. Over time, town staff and the landowners worked together, and seven of the eight landowners have now submitted petitions for annexation. The one property owner who did not submit an annexation petition is highlighted in green. This annexation is being processed as a majority annexation. The landowners that have applied for annexation comprise, more than, comprise of more than 50% of the landowners of the real property described in the annexation petition. So the town has contemplated the annexation and ultimate incorporation of this area into, of unincorporated Douglas County into the town of Parker since 2002. The property is located within the central commercial district of the Parker 2035 master plan. The central commercial district focuses on core retail, services, offices, lodging, restaurants, entertainment, and to a lesser extent, higher density residential uses. The proposed zoning is consistent with this master plan. So staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan, provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations. Utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. It satisfies the nine criteria required for rezonings within the town of Parker. And the Planning Commission held a public hearing on June 14, 2018 and re recommended unanimous approval. 
So therefore, the Planning Commission and staff recommend Town Council approve the Pine Lane and Parker Road annexation and zoning into the Town of Parker. This concludes my staff report, my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have. We do not have an applicant here tonight, so it's all on me. Okay. <laughs> all right, so hard questions for Stacy. I think j just to clarify, Stacy, I know staff had reached out many times to all, all of the different landowners. My understanding is so we had the one property sort of marked there, but there was just basically no response. Correct. So we had phone calls, emails, letters. We tried everything. Um, that property owner did attend one of the open houses that we had. Um, so we had their contact information. They did know us. We had their email address. Um, and then as we got closer, they just wouldn't show up. They wouldn't respond. We even sent them a certified um, letter, return receipt, just to make sure they got it and still no, nothing. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? First days? None? All right, then we'll open it up for public comment at 7.41 p.m. if there's anyone wanting to address council on items 8D, 1, 2, 3, or 4. All right, Dr. Milan. I have to every time. Every time you're here, i got to ask you that. One of these times you're going to say yes and come on up. But All right. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.42 p.m. I'll entertain further discussion or four separate motions for the four different items, please. I move to approve resolution number... 18-046. Second. Motion by Debbie and a second by Josh. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item, number two. I move to approve ordinance number 2.261 on second reading. Second. That's a motion by Amy and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. I motion. move to approve ordinance number 3.335 on second reading. Second. Motion by John, second by Amy. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last item. I move to approve the seven annexation agreements. Second. Motion by Amy, second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. With no further business before council, we will adjourn at 7.43 p.m.